Welcome to Sands of Salazar Mods. In the previous video, a subscriber asked me what mods I use. The mod on the screen now is Tower of the Sorcerer in Salazar, which is one of a thousand mods out there, and the great majority of them are in Chinese. In this video, I will go ahead and break down each of the mods that I have installed. If any of those mods are new to you and you liked it, please hit that like button for me. Infinite Durability by Handsome. Durability. There are certain aspects that just don't need to be in video games. Yes, it might be more realistic that a hammer does not survive 50 years of fighting. Fine. However, generally hammers don't also summon phoenixes and turn you into a bear. Let me just try to find an enemy to fight. Right now I have listed 50 durability. Let's go ahead and fight these guys. We take a look at my hammer, it has dropped to 49 durability. And this will repeat and that you'll eventually have just repair everything. Which was go to a town, look to see if they have any hammers, or go to the blacksmith. Just hit repair all, whatever. Wow, that was a riveting game mechanic there. I'm so glad I did that. With infinite durability mod. Durability never decreases. Stuff doesn't spoil by at at at. In the normal version of the game, your food stuffs all come with an expiration date. Days until spoiled, 10 days until spoils for apples, wheat lasts longer. There's a little bit of nuance there. However, I will say it's just tedious. Go to your inventory, your foodstuffs are contained in this little bag. It's a spare little inventory section. The primary goal of this is to remove the expiration date on your food. As an additional bonus, it also removes the expiration date on your white rose potions. And while all of these things do make your game easier, Realistically, the reason I have this is because it just makes my inventory cleaner. Otherwise, you're going to be stuck with white rose potion expires in four days here, one in two days, and it's just going to clutter up your inventory when you have a possible 165 extra slots or something. It it's just becomes tedious. As a result of all of them having the same durability, the game just goes ahead and stacks them up to 99. NPC skill reset by way. Every now and then, the NPCs on the map will check to see if they have unspent skill points, and if they do, they're just going to spend them willy-nilly. I don't have any reason to believe there's actually any intelligence whatsoever into how they spend their points. They're just going to just spend them whatever. And then we'll try looking at one of the characters. Here's Mahan Hassan. Quest for you. Join my team. Hardy. And Hassan, skills. He's already spent on a bunch of these things. Maybe we don't want that. Maybe I want him to learn Ember Emergency Device. Sounds pretty cool. However, without the mod, you just have to accept what he spent his points on. I've enabled the mod. Under normal circumstances, if you just click this, if your relationship is at 50 or 100, the NPC's command skill goes to the next level. 50 for level 2, 100 for level 3. However, with the mod enabled, there is an intermediary step that is generated that allows you to relearn your skills. Are you sure you want me to unlearn all my skills? Yes, please. And then let's just update this window by clicking off of him and then on back. And I have 15 skill points. This is the same 15 he had before that I can now just spend wherever I feel like. All Skill Trees by Jojo Loverai. When you're starting a new game, you get to spend your legacy points, which are basically your roguelike metagaming progression points that carry over from character to character. I have accumulated 500 and I kind of deliberately stopped at 500 because it was a nice round number. But you could spend say 25 points there and you'll notice that I've now spent 25 of my 500 and you can do this for people, objects, whatever. Well, in these skills, it's kind of, I mean, it's not lackluster. But there's definitely skills that are not present. These skills are grayed out, and we'll cover that in the next mod. But right now, you can see that each one of these is a specific individual skill. Meaning that charge is not a charge skill tree, it's just the charge ability. So if I pick that when I start the game, this is the default page that you get. Any character has their own skill set. And then as part of my legacy, I picked slicer and charge, and now I can use these as well. Once we've enabled the all skill trees mod. And this doesn't have the, the latest skill trees. The skill trees at the time the mod was created. But if we go down to settings, not in skill. 
scroll, we can now see that there's Fire Arcana. We can maybe start with that. We can start with an old version of Sansa Sazar scale called Swordcraft for 10 points. Old Berserk. All of the characters have gone through generations of skill changes. We have new Spirit Mancer, and probably somewhere old Spirit Mancer up here. Yeah, Sp Spirit Master. I can see that the, the skills themselves, they, they don't look like they have a lot of unique identifiers, such as reduced cooldown and enhanced arcana. I can see that that is a very old skill tree. Maybe I want something more current day. We could get Royal Archer, which some of the NPCs have. Art of Combat. I think in the older versions that I was writing guides for, it was martial arts or something like that. You can start with any of these skills, and they all cost something to give it some semblance of balance. And most players are not going to have 500-odd legacy points, so you'll have to pick and choose which ones you want. If you get this mod and you want to shop around for the best skill trees, visit my Ultimate Heroes Guide spreadsheet, which I'll leave a link to the video down below. The reason I'm not linking directly to the spreadsheet, rather the video that links to the spreadsheet is I want to have everything consolidate to that one video so that way if the link ever needs to get updated I don't have to go and dig up 300 different videos that I said like here's the link. <laughs> and if nothing else the video at least tells you how to read this monster of a spreadsheet. Skills for the Nameless by Zalabu. When you start a new game you're given an option to be the Nameless which is Essentially a blank character slate. There we go. Nameless. You note that I cannot pick any of these skills, these individual skills, anymore. However, I can pick skill trees that belong to other characters such as the Berserker character or the Knight Errant character. That's what the Nameless is about. Perhaps you don't like that and you would like to have more options rather than fewer. This mod is for you. Start another new game. The end. SD. You note that I can now pick Strike, Bloodletting, Power Leap, whatever to my heart's content. These skills can now be purchased by the Nameless, should that interest you. No dungeon cooldowns, prep time, and costs by at at at. First, let's talk about cooldowns. Whenever you complete an event, such as this area right here, there's generally some time before you're allowed to revisit that cave, and that makes sense. The lair needs time to reproduce its wolves or bandit stuff, whatever. That makes sense. However, I've never really liked how much loot you get out of this. You complete an entire dungeon and walk away with one random weapon that your guys cannot equip because they're very picky about what weapon style they'll choose. And in a way to kind of help alleviate that, we can remove the cooldown so we can just keep revisiting the cave, but realistically, I think the loot should be way better. Instead of finding one random piece of gear, find six to eight or something. That's a lot more reasonable. We can't even visit this tiny little den with nothing in it until seven days. That's the cooldown part. Preparation time. The higher the level of the dungeon, the longer it takes your guys to just sit outside the area. This one will take 6 hours because it's a low level dungeon. But higher level dungeons might take 24 hours where your characters just have to sit there. And should they get interrupted, such as an NPC wants to talk to you, or attack you, or any of that stuff, too bad, so sad, you have to start the whole thing over. Oh, and I don't think you get refunded your resources either. I don't even notice the resource expenditure, it's really just a time thing. But the last part is it costs you iron stone and wood and gold or whatever to enter a dungeon. Dungeons differ, and I don't know what all the dungeons, the, the cost for each dungeon is. But in no way is that a big deal. The most important thing is, you want to do the dungeon, you get to do the dungeon. There you go. Treasure Dungeons are open to non-city lords by Red Bean Milk Tea. The modern Sands of Salazar game is a little bit harder to tell cities apart from outposts in the earlier version that I had played, instead of being called something like Misty Village, it was called Frost Valley North Outpost, Frost Valley West Outpost, or something like that. The reason why I'm bringing this up is the outposts themselves do not have something called a sanctuary. Sanctuaries are only properties of the main cities. Agadir is a main city, Northport is not. If we go to Agadir, go to the Tribal Hall, you'll find somebody called a Mystic Witch. These guys in the earlier version of the game, used to be walking around outside the map. 
uh, outside the little city just around. Here it says you may select three companions, just basically three heroes. It's essentially a one-room dungeon where you fight a super powerful boss monster. And yeah, there's it, it, even this has a preparation time, as long as you don't have the no cooldown mod. Only the Sultan of a town can enter the sanctuary. In this case, this is ruled by one of our subordinates. I'm still the Sultan. The subordinate is just the governor. Without the mod, if I'm not the Sultan of an area, so we're going to head over to the Dokken, which is a completely different faction from us. Go to the Tribal Hall. And we click on the Mystic Witch. We are not the Sultan. He does not want you to speak. But we can't do this. And of course, if we weren't faction aligned at all, we still wouldn't be able to speak to him. So let me go ahead and enable the mod. Now let's try again. Powerful Guardians. Yep, we can we can completely do this mission if we felt like it. And we would get owned because we just started this campaign for the purposes of this demonstration. With this mod, the only requirement is that you get into the Tribal Hall. This may mean having a good reputation with that town or being the leader of any faction. Managing a faction will take a lot of time. It is considerably easier just to run one quest for the towns with sanctuaries inside. Super Return Scroll by Legend Enlightenment. The game normally gives you a regular scroll that can be used an infinite number of times, but has a seven day cooldown. If I were to try to use it now, it would allow me to return to a town that I've selected, which I haven't for this particular playthrough. I just started a fresh playthrough to make sure I had the plain ordinary return scroll or a rally point, whichever your most recent rally point is. And since we just started, this is our rally point. A rally point are those orange flags that are kind of around the map. Let's see if we can find one. This is a rally point. Should I make this my rally point? Sure. You can also set them in towns. Head over to Fleur, which is near here. And you can click this button and also set this to be your rally point instead. Oh, we'll need a trade permit before we're allowed to do so. But again, this is this is just a new game. And this would actually be something that you'd have to deal with. The Super Return Scroll, on the other hand, has no cooldown. You can use it whenever you want. You could pick any area, any direct dungeon, special recruit areas, basically the level 20 things that are on the map that give you a dragon, a pixie, or whatever. Towns in the Ifrit Domain, Heroic Souls, the Bazaars, the Achievement Bosses. There are four enchantment areas on the map where you spend 50 Jade to apply a modifier to any of your existing weapons. Bandit camps around the world. And perhaps the biggest thing, just directly teleporting you to a character. If the character is currently respawning and he's not on the map, your, your character will just disappear. Just use their super return scroll again and find a valid place to land. So let's say I wanted to go to, I don't know, how about Black Main? And here we are. Now sometimes if you don't see the person directly, they're inside the the army black main is currently leading emen so if i had selected emen i'd also be warped to black main because that's where he is sometimes they're in towns and you might have to sneak into the town or whatever that's a separate issue but this scroll whoops this scroll very powerful out of the quality of life mods i have this would be considered a cheat item but you know what i'm okay with it Given how many playthroughs I've already completed the game, I would like to think that I've at least earned the right to teleport from town to town instead of having to hold the control key with my pinky, which always starts aching after holding control for 15 minutes while running from point A to point B in Sands of Salzar. Say Goodbye to Gacha by Red Bean Milk Tea. Normally when you clear a dungeon, sanctuary, prison, whatever, you get a random reward. In this case, we had a Nasir Militia out of the available Tier 1 prisoners. With this mod, you can actually pick your reward, though it might not help you too much. There is one issue with the mod. It is not in English. <laughs> None of this is in English. However, I will say that if you combine this with the no cooldown mod, you can solve by process of elimination, or you can just hold up your smartphone, assuming you have one, send this through an optical character recognition and try to make your best guess as, as to the thing you want. Let's pick number one here. It is the Akhal Dweller. Now I know that the very first one will always be the Akhal Dweller, and if I want more of them, perhaps I want a cavalry army, I can pick that one. Maybe I decide I want third warriors, then I know that number one is not the one I need, maybe it's one of the ones towards the bottom. At one time, this mod gave you English options, but as it became obsolete, it's probably not drawing from the right text files. 
Remove tier 6 arms restrictions. A little. I don't think this still works, but some people say you need to just wait a little while. We'll give it a shot on camera and see if we can get it to run in a couple days. Normally, to promote units to tier 6, this is tier 5, you need to have some sort of requirement, such as approval from a certain character or a certain faction. In this case, if I wanted to upgrade this Nasir Archer to a Nasir Crosswoman, a tier 6, required to upgrade previously earned a rank 3 Nasir title. To do that, you would normally have to play as a Nasir officer until you reached the third rank. Let's try enabling the mod. This I find to be obnoxious. I prefer not having the mod running at all times. If I were to even recruit soldiers. But if you if you wanted to upgrade your soldiers, I would enable it only when you're ready to promote. Because every time you load your game, this pop-up will appear. I, I don't like pop-ups. There is no real need. You had to look up, you had to install the mod, then you had to turn on the mod. I mean, we don't need that pop-up. <laughs> Whatever game. So now we go to promote and we click upgrade. Required to upgrade previously earned a rank 3 in this year title. Let's try waiting a couple days and see if that changes. If I noticed in the comments that it says it no longer works, this may be one of those mods that just that has become obsolete over time. Right, let's give it another shot now. It doesn't appear to work any longer, or if it does, maybe it requires more than a few days. But for the time being, this is not a mod I would recommend. How about you? Do you have mods that you'd like to share? Please let me know down in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching Sands of Salazar Mods. I'll see you next time.